Welcome. M welcome to the National Archives Know Your Records program. My name is Andrea Bassing Matney. We're broadcasting live on YouTube today, and we are pleased that you have joined us. This is our first in a series of Know Your Records program on the YouTube channel. Uh, we are broadcasting from the Washington, D.C. building of the National Archives with an on-site audience. Welcome. I have a few tips for you before we start the program. First, I'd like to point out that we have handouts for our on-site audience. For those of you watching on YouTube, we have handouts and live captioning links available on the YouTube website as well as the Know Your Records website. And I have one last tip. Uh, lastly, uh, if you could hold your questions until the end, and I'm going to flip through a couple of slides here. Okay, let's begin. Today's lecture is entitled uh, 50th Anniversaries of Voting Rights, and our presenter today is Dr. Tina L. Lagan. Dr. Lagan is an archivist in the textual division, I'm sorry, textual processing division at the National Archives in College Park. I'm now turning over the microphone to Dr. Lagan. Hi, good afternoon. I feel like a guinea pig being the first uh, presenter for the Know Your Records series on YouTube. So uh, welcome to the audience here and welcome to the YouTube audience. So. This year will mark the 50th anniversary of the marches from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Along with the release of the Oscar-nominated movie Selma, there has been renewed interest in these historic events. Everyday historians and academic scholars are reinvigorated to learn more and to educate others about the importance and the sacrifices made by those involved in these marches 50 years ago. The National Archives, Regional Archives, and Presidential Libraries contain several textual records, photographs, moving images, and sound recordings um, related to this topic. There is a wealth of information here um, among the many record groups and collections um, to support this renewed or uh, renewed interest in the march to Selma, from Selma to Montgomery and the Voting Rights Act. Uh, this presentation will only focus on a few of the series and file units uh, related. It's almost impossible to talk about everything that we have relating to this topic but I'm kind of hoping that this presentation can serve as a guide to help people further do research on these historic marches. So last year was the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This act gave African Americans hope for equality in America. The act allowed for the Department of Justice, the DOJ, to initiate lawsuits on behalf of individuals who were discriminated against based on race, color, religion, sex, and national origin in public, uh, in public accommodations. Excuse me. But despite all the good intentions of the Civil Rights Act, African Americans were still faced with discrimination in many public spaces across the country, and especially in the South, where they were still denied access to the vote. Now the press releases, speeches, testimonies, and other records um, series in the department, um, record group 60, Department of Justice records, um, consist of information released by the DOJ for public knowledge on cases relating to kidnappings, prisons, voting rights, and civil rights. Several of the press releases following the Civil Rights Act showed that even with this new legislation, 
there were still new cases of African Americans whose rights were violated. The physical attacks on African Americans in the South and the inability to register to vote showed that there was still unfinished business in the quest for complete civil rights. After Freedom Summer ended in 1964, the Student Nonviolent Coordinated Committee, or SNCC, continued voter registration efforts in the South. The organization turned their attention to Alabama, where only 2% of the African American population in Dallas County, for example, was registered to vote. But the constant resistance um, from the, board, the County Board of Voter Registrars um, forced the community to ask for additional support. In other words, the students of SNCC, um, the Dallas County Voters League, kept um, meeting up hurdles um, when attempting to register residents to vote. So they decided to ask for additional assistance from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, um, SCLC, and Martin, Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. Now, I will be discussing several series in the FBI and DLJ records, and one such series is the FBI Classification 44 Civil Rights um, Headquarter Case Files. My zipper is rubbing against you, excuse me. Um, this file unit, uh, 44-12831, contains letters from black citizens in Dallas County complaining about um, not being able to register to vote. Now, Alabama in the 1960s was an oppressive and volatile state. Black Alabamans were denied basic rights, access to quality education, and limited employment opportunities. Additionally, Alabama was the scene of several tragic events that included the attack on freedom riders in Anniston in 1961, and the bombing that killed four little girls in a Birmingham church in 1963. With leading figures such as Commissioner of Public Safety Eugene Bull Connor, who used police dogs and fire hose against black protesters, and Governor George Wallace, who proclaimed segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever made it their mission to prevent African Americans from having any civil or voting rights. With most of these records um, coming from the DLJ and FBI, they contain a lot of sensitive information. Um, due to the investigative nature, um, these series falls under restriction of the Freedom of Information Act or FOIA. Most of the restrictions you will find in uh, series in these two record groups will fall under FOIA B6, personal information, or FOIA B7, law enforcement. Uh, these records may contain sensitive information such as medical and health status of individuals involved, techniques used by the FBI and law enforcers, and informant information. Uh, when dealing with a lot of these events in the 50s and 60s, many of these informants are still alive today, or possibly are still alive today. Therefore, researchers must contact NARS forest staff to attain access to many of the records discussed in this presentation. Um, to learn more about FOIA or to uh, submit a request, you can visit um, the NARA homepage and just search for FOIA. Excuse me. African American residents in Alabama fought for their rights. On February 18, 1965, about 400 people in Selma organized to protest, organized a protest march from a local Methodist church to a nearby courthouse. The group attempted to show support for SNCC member, for jailed SNCC member James Orange. The protesters were confronted by state troopers. During the confrontation, 26-year-old Jimmy Lee Jackson, his mother, and 82-year-old grandfather attempted to escape the violence by hiding in a local small cafe. 
state troopers followed and brutally attacked Jackson and his family members. While trying to protect his mother, Jimmy Lee Jackson was shot by Alabama State Trooper James Bernard Fowler. Jackson died several days later at a local hospital. In 2007, Fowler pleaded guilty to one count of second degree manslaughter and was sentenced to six months in prison. Now the FBI investigated the circumstances surrounding the death of Jimmy Lee Jackson. Agents needed to determine whether or not his civil rights were violated. In the FBI records, Classification 44 Civil Rights Headquarter Case Files series, there are photographs, newspaper clippings, memorandums, and made reports related to Jackson's murder and funeral. Many of the related case files uh, to the Jackson murder also contain additional information uh, besides the information on Jackson, meaning that the FBI was broadening their investigation. They included the stuff on Jimmy, ja Jimmy Lee Jackson, but they also was looking at other people involved. Um, such people that was also found in these statements is Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., C.T. Vivian, Hosha Williams, James Orange, and James Bevel. Also, if you look into uh, Record Group 60, Department of Justice records, there is a series in the moving images, Class 144 Civil Rights Films. The related film, Selma and the Marion Riots, 1965, contained commercial footage from the protest Jackson and his family members were involved prior to his death. The films were also used as evidence with um, DOJ case file number 144-2-466 um, from, from the District of Middle Alabama. Um, the investigation from the Department of Justice led to the Supreme Court case, United States v. Alabama State Troopers. Mm -hmm. Now, Hosha Williams of SCLC and John Lewis of SNCC led a protest march let a protest, let a march to protest the murder of Jimmy Lee Jackson and to bring attention for a need for federal voting rights legislation. On Sunday morning, March 7, 1965, nearly 500 people met after church to begin the 54 mile march to Montgomery, Alabama. The protesters made it to the Edmund Pettimus Bridge just outside of Selma when they were ordered to disperse by about 150 white state white police troopers. The marchers refused to stop and were badly beaten by police and onlookers. Now the events of Bloody Sunday were televised across the country. Americans and others around the world saw the protesters violently attacked. The FBI and DLJ both led investigations into the attack and possible civil rights violations of the protesters. Again, in RG65 FBI records, classification 44 civil rights headquarter case files, there are correspondence, memorandums, photographs, newspaper clippings, reports, and telegrams relating to the attack on the bridge. Details of the investigation of Bloody Sunday can be found in several of the file units, such as serials 44-28492 and 44-28441. These file units um, contain summaries of the events of Bloody Sunday, letters from people complaining about the way the protesters were treated, and statements from the victims. Also, in RG60 Department of Justice, uh, class 144 civil rights films, there are actual moving images of this protest and the attack on the Edmund Pedmus Bridge. The films in this series were used by the Justice Department to investigate in cases regarding civil rights violation. The moving image demonstrations at Marion and Selma, Alabama, 1965, has the actual footage. The second, this is a, um, several reels within this series. Um, the second and the third reels of this, of this item were obtained by ABC, 
and the fourth reel was uh, obtained from CBS. Um, these were actual like news reports that people saw across the country of the actual attacks. Now during the attack on the Edmund Pedmas Bridge, several protesters suffered all types of injuries, including local act activist Amila Borton, who was beaten unconscious. In Record Group 21, records of the district courts at the National Archives in Atlanta contain several series and file units of lawsuits pertaining to discrimination and violence towards African Americans. After the attack on the Edmund Pedmas Bridge, Hosea Williams, John Lewis, and Amelia Borton filed suit against Alabama Governor George Wallace for the right to march from Selma to uh, Montgomery without being harassed or verbally or physically assaulted. The series, Civil, Case, Civil Cases, September 1938 to November 26, 1968, contains a foul unit on the district court case Williams, Lewis, and Borton v. Honorable George C. Wallace as governor of the state of Alabama. The United States District Court in Montgomery ruled on March 17th to allow the march to take place. In addition, President Lyndon Baines Johnson called the, national, called the Alabama National Guard into federal service to protect the protesters. This file unit contains testimony from many um, leaders from SNCC and the SCLC, um, namely um, the testimony of Martin Luther King is also found in this series. Now, although Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was not present for the first attempt to Montgomery, he sent out a national call to ministers and activists across the country to join the march to Montgomery. The district court judge had ordered a restraining order, this is prior to the ruling um, on March 17th, um, on March 11th, pretty much saying for the protesters to wait um, so we can get, get provide you protection. Again, the 54 mile trek from Selma to Montgomery will go through a lot of rural areas and who knows what could happen during that journey. Um, and also President Johnson wanted King to hold off on this second attempt. But on Tuesday morning, March 9th, King led about 2,000 marchers to the Edmund Pettinus Bridge. Once at the bridge, the protesters stopped. Um, Dr. King led them in prayer, and then they returned back to Selma. Now, many news outlets, such as ABC, CBS, NBC, covered the events of Turnaround Tuesday. The footage of the protesters at the bridge can be seen in Record Group 306, U.S. Information Agency series, moving images relating to U.S. domestic and international activities, and in the Hearst Metro, Metro Town News Incorporated collection, News of the Day motion picture newsreel. Now, several supporters from around the country joined the Tuesday march um, to the Edmund Pettimus Bridge with the intention of continuing to Montgomery. Unitarian Minister Reverend James Reeb of Boston was one of the marchers who answered Dr. King's call. After the events earlier in the day, Reeb and two other men were violently attacked by a white mob. Reeb died two days later from his injuries. There are a couple of ser series that contain documentation on the investigation of the murder of Reverend Reeb. In the FBI records, uh, classification 157, civil unrest, field office cases in Chicago, Illinois, um, there is a file unit 157-772 and classification 44, civil rights headquarter case files uh, with the file unit 44-28441 that contains information of the murder of Reeb and the attack on the two other men. Now in 2007, the FBI reopened this case as part of their um, code case, civil rights code case project. Okay. 
Now, the persistence of the protesters and the violence and murders associated with the march from, marches from Selma to Montgomery called, pre, caused President Lyndon Baines Johnson to take action. On March 15, 1965, President Johnson addressed Congress on the events in Selma and the need to pass voting rights legislation. At the National Archives in College Park, there were a few series and moving images and sound recordings that captured John's, President Johnson's address to Congress. This series, most in pictures released of the Universal Newsreel Library, contains the actual footage of President Johnson addressing Congress on the need for a voting rights bill. In this address, LBJ revert, referred to the events in Selma as an American tragedy. Also from the John R. Hickman audio collection is the series sound recordings of historic radio broadcasts, World War II government documentaries, and popular radio shows. This series consists of radio broadcasts produced by federal agencies and commercial radio networks. Included in the series is the item, Special Message to Congress on the American Promise, President Lyndon Johnson, March 15, 1965. This sound recording is also the audio recording of the speech that Congress gave, that Johnson gave to Congress. There are also many other records related to the Selma to Montgomery marches located at the LBJ Library in Austin, Texas. The Civil Rights Bulk Mail Files series consists of mail sent to President Johnson from April 1964 to August 1965. The letters, postcards, telegrams, petitions, and newspaper clippings document public opinion regarding the civil rights movement. Most of the mail relates to the violence associated with voting rights demonstrations in Selma and elsewhere in the South, and the president's televised speech to Congress on the American promise. Most of the letters supported the president's policies and views on civil rights and voting rights. Also, the appointment files of November 22, 1963 to January 20, 1969, contain items relating to President Johnson's schedule, briefing papers, and talking points for meetings, agendas, memorandums, and guest lists. The file unit, March 12 through 18, 1965, um, a Selma situation, contains an online memorandum from Vice President Herbert H. Humphreys to President Lyndon B. Johnson, March 12, 1965. The memo, which is available through our online system, is a brief summary of a meeting the Council on Equal Opportunity held with suggestions on a course of action for President John that President Johnson should consider in regard to the protest in Selma and a federal voting rights legislation. Also located at the LBJ Library is the White House Subject Files on Human Rights. This series includes um, records on human and civil rights, segregation and integration, and citizenship and voting rights. This series also contains documentation of the meeting between President Johnson and Alabama's Governor George Wallace about protection, providing protection for the marchers. The third attempt um, to march from Selma to Montgomery was a success. With federal protection, nearly 8,000 protesters assembled at the Brown Chapel on March 21st to begin the 54-mile trek. The protesters arrived in Montgomery on Thursday, March 25th, with nearly 25,000 people in attendance. The marchers were treated to a rally with performances by Harry Belafonte, Tony Bennett, Joan Baez, and Nina Simone. Dr. King also delivered his How Long, Not Long speech on the steps of the Capitol building in Montgomery. Now, many series in our holdings contain surveillance reports, photographs, transcripts, telegrams, letters, and postcards related to the march. In the FBI files, classification 144 civil rights um, consists of FBI regional offices investigation reports 
about violence relating to civil rights laws. Several of the file units in this series contains general information about the march. The serials 44-28544 and 44-1406 have documentations of the events surrounding the third march, as well as information on the leadership, which includes reports and statements by Dr. King, Reverend Ralph Abernathy, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, and James Foreman. Also in the classification 157 civil unrest case files are letters, memorandums, teletypes, newspaper uh, clippings, reports, interviews, and transcripts um, from the Birmingham, Alabama Field Division of the FBI. File unit 157-5879 uh, is the file dealing with the march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, um, which has a lot of great information uh, about the 3rd of March. Much like the first two marches, the third march was heavily covered by the news media. The item News of the Day, March 24, 1965, shows Martin Luther King and Ralph Bunch leading the marchers with the protection of the Alabama State Troopers into Montgomery. Also, the News of the Day, January 2, 1966, has video of the marchers uh, when they arrived on the steps of the State Capitol building. Another moving image with footage of the march from Selma to Montgomery is America in the 20th Century Black Protest in Record Group 129, Motion Pitch, uh, Record Group 129 Bureau of Prisons. And this item is found in the series Motion, motion, Pictures, motion Picture Films Related to Federal Corrections Institutes and Criminal Justice. And finally, in Record Group 136, excuse me, 106, U.S. Information Agency also contained movement images of the march from, marches from Selma to Montgomery. Now, following the march, several volunteers drove protesters back to Selma from Montgomery. One volunteer was Viola, Viola Lauza a mother and wife from Detroit, Michigan. She came to Alabama after seeing the attacks on peaceful uh, protesters in the South on television. After the third march to Montgomery, Lauzo assisted with the transport, transporting protesters back to Selma. Leroy Morton, a local 19-year-old black man, helped her with the drives. The two were spotted together in the car. They noticed that she had Michigan license plates and it was a black woman with a black man in the car. They were pursued by a car of four Klansmen who, shot, who caught up with them and shot into the car, killing Lauzo instantly. Morton saved himself by pretending to be dead. Uh, when the Klan came to inspect to make sure everybody in the car was dead, he um, laid there very still. In May 1965, the trial of Lyusa killers began, but the all-white jury could not come up with a decision and a mistrial was declared. A second trial in October 65 occurred and the men were found not guilty of murder. But in the federal trial, the defendants were found guilty of conspiracy to violate the civil rights of Lyusa and were sentenced to 10 years in prison which this became a landmark decision in Southern legal history. Um, also, one interesting thing with this particular case was it came out that one of the men in the car, or one of the shooters, was a paid FBI informant. And in some of the records, you do see how J. Edgar Hoover tried to, when this came out, instead of embarrassing the FBI, he came out and tried to slander the character of Lausen. He tried to say that she was um, unstable, that she abandoned her family, and that she possibly had a romantic interest in Leroy Martin. Okay. Now, the DOJ conducted an investigation into the violations of Viola Lauza's civil rights, uh, which led to the Wilkins v. United States case. In class 144, DLJ records class 144 civil rights litigation case files, 
There is a case file unit 144-2-470, uh, which consists of the investigative reports, affidavits, uh, notes, memorandums, correspondence relating to the investigation of her murder. The FBI also, again, um, had an investigation or case file on her murder. Again, you'll find in classification 44 civil rights case files and in classification 157, several file units um, on her murder. Also in the FBI files, classification 157 field office case files in Chicago, Illinois, there are a few case files about memorials that were held for her in the Detroit area after her murder. Now, the marches from Selma to Montgomery brought national and international attention for the need for federal legislation on voting rights. The violence associated with the marches and public support forced Congress to act on a voting rights legislation. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 was signed into law by President Johnson on August 6. At the LBJ Library are several series that contain textual records and moving images on the actions of President Johnson and Congress regarding um, the voting rights legislation. In series, office files of Bill Moore, 1961-1965, excuse me, 1967, is at the file unit, Voting Rights Message, which is a memorandum dated August 6 from the Attorney General to President Johnson about the implications of the Voting Rights Act as well as drafts of the proposed legislation. Also at the LBJ library, uh, library is the photograph or photographs of the signing of the Voting Rights Act and the remarks made at the ceremony. But most important is the actual Voting Rights Act record. Uh, the record groups um, RG46 U.S. Senate and RG223 Excuse me, 233, the U.S. House of Representatives, contains copies of voting rights legislation, congressional records, and roll call tallies on the bill. In addition, there are telegrams from people interested in the legislation, including those from Martin Luther King, Jr., and many images, many of these images relating to the Voting Rights Act are available online through our public act, pub, online public access system and the upcoming National Archives catalog. Um, in conclusion, um, this presentation was just an introduction to the many records um, at the National Archives, Regional Archives, and uh, the LBJ uh, Presidential Library on the Selma to Montgomery marches and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. There are many other records and many other incidents that uh, were part of this event um, that were not included in this presentation. I feel like I'm just throwing out a lot of information right now. Um, but all this information is equally important. So I hope, my hope is that researchers, historians, people just interested in this topic um, will take advantage of the wealth of information that we do have available and the information that's not available um, to please submit a FOIA request to try to get them available. So with that note, I am going to end and ask if there are any questions. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Lagan. Uh, that was a lot of information. <laughs> um, pardon me if you mentioned this. Uh, it's been 50 years, and I assume there's a lot of private privacy information, mm -hmm. uh, like social security numbers possibly, people's addresses. Are things in these records uh, redacted so that you can still get the record, but it, some information might be blacked out? Right. Um, I don't work in the FOIA office, <laughs> but if you do submit the FOIA request, some things that will be held under either B6 personal information mm -hmm. or B7 law enforcement will be um, blacked out to a degree. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you all for attending today. I'm going to switch this to our last slide. Uh, this presentation will remain up online on our YouTube channel. If you came in later, uh, I mentioned that not only is this video available, but if you look below the video screen, there's information about uh, this program, and there's a link to our handouts today. So for those of you that are with us today, if you could take a moment to fill out the evaluation, I appreciate it. We'll be back on February 24th, and I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.